I really don't know why I was postponing this game for that long. And well, it was my mistake and hopefully you will not make the same mistake as me. And well, in this video, we're going to be reviewing Prey and whether it is worth it to buy right now, years after its release, or whether you should just move on to some other things. So let's just get it started. And as always, as with every single hour review, I'm going to be giving you the answer right away whether it is worth it to buy right now this game or not, just to not waste your precious time. And the answer is yes, absolutely. Prey is an amazing experience and an amazing game that you are not getting nowadays anymore. And you should 100% experience this. However, it's not without its flaws. So let's just get into the details. So what is Prey? So Prey is the first person action game with an FPS elements, horror elements, and the puzzle elements. A lot of people are calling this game an FPS, but you can call the Dishonored FPS in the same manner, even though it's actually not. The shooting is not the main part of this game. Main part is actually exploration and puzzle solving with some combat. The game actually will allow you to go through a large part of the game, not all of it, but the large part of the game without actually killing anyone or taking part in combat unless it's very scripted and necessary or you can just go guns blazing through entire of the games and kill everyone and everything in your way you have a choice in this game so what this game actually is and what story what's the gameplay like and well what you will experience while playing this game this game is actually a reboot of the prey game that came out back in 2000s and if I played this old, and if you played an old prey game which I have and I really really loved the old prey game this game is practically nothing like it. The only thing that is left from that game is a title. That's it. And one other thing that I actually myself experienced is an atmosphere of an unknown. It's the similar, it's, the game has a bit similar feeling, but not quite. So if you think that this game is anything like an old prey game, well, it's just not. So you're playing as Morgan and you can actually be either male or female character and you are actually a scientist who is partaking into different experiments. And no, I'm not gonna give you any major spoilers, maybe very, very minor ones. But yeah, because because the story is very important in this game. And during one of those experiments, you will feel like, well, something is, well, not right. And you have to uncover what is wrong and what is happening around you that you are not aware of. The main antagonist of the game is alien race called Tython. And, and probably this is the best part of the game because it plays very deep, because it gives you very interesting gameplay mechanics. So this alien race is kind of similar to the Venom symbiote. It's like black gooey race that can actually do a bunch of other things, including transforming into anything that they want and telepathy. And your goal is basically to find out what is happening on a space station, which is called Talos, which was overrun by aliens and well, either escape or do a bunch of other things. Again, no spoilers. The story itself pretty interesting and pretty cool, but to be fair, I was not amazed by what is happening in the game. It is pretty interesting and pretty fun. I enjoyed the story through and through, except for the very last part of the game, which is a bit dragged out, but the story is very interesting and very fun and gives you just the sense of mystery and uncovering what is happening around you. The only twist that I saw was at the very, very, very end of the game, which is literally a post credit scene and yeah this was kind of weird and i did not expect what was happening i i actually did not anticipate that but yeah that's an only well twist that i found out was actually a real real very very ending of the game the game has a kind of like a branching storyline so you can actually have a different endings but overall the story is pretty interesting and you're going to enjoy it quite a lot but what about the main part? What about the meat of the game? What about the gameplay? Gameplay of this game is actually where the prey actually shines. And the main and most important part is its level design. And immediately, if you have played the Dishonored games, you will understand that this game was made by same developers because you have a bunch of different approaches through the levels. So game is kind of like an open world, even though the, uh, the, the even, even though the station itself is divided into different zones, which have a loading screens between them. You are actually free to progress through levels and through well different parts of the station in a few different ways. You can go through combat and just kill everyone and everything and just clear everything out or just you can avoid the enemies altogether well in many cases not in all of the cases though uh, by doing by being very quiet and stealthy 
each level has some kind of puzzle behind it because you need to do certain things in order to progress to the next part of the level. For example, you have a locked door. You have a few options to progress. The first option will be to actually find a key card that will allow you to unlock the door and just move to the next part of the level. But the second part may be a hacking of the door itself. You have invested in hacking skills. The next way may be to find a ventilation shaft and move through it. Another way might be just while well, stacking a bunch of things one above another and just jump all through the wall. This, uh, this thing can, can actually happen as well. And in order to do that, you actually need to well level up your leverage, leverage skill that will allow you to well carry a larger object. And this different approach allows you to complete the game into few different play styles and just adds some kind of replayability to the game. And on the second playthrough, you might find out and discover things that you didn't pay attention during the first playthrough or you didn't even see at all there. And which makes it very fun and very interesting. But the coolest thing in this game has to be an enemies, or particularly a single enemy, Mimics. So Mimics are actually your base enemies. These are the weakest enemies that you will actually find in the game. But they have very interesting gameplay mechanics. Visually they look like a mix of the Venom symbiote and Hatcrab from the Half-Life series. And they're actually not that tough to kill, but they're actually pretty tough to fight. Because they fight in swarms, they, you have quite a few of them and they are actually disguising themselves into any object that they want. Basically, if you go to the room, you might see it completely empty, but when you approach a chair, chair suddenly might transform to a mimic and attack you. And this adds some kind of horror or jump scare element. And, just, and this just keeps you tense every single moment because everything in a room when you go there can be an enemy. Even though they do not deal a ton of damage, at the later stages of the game when you're fighting a lot of them at the same time, they might become a bit of a headache and a bit of a challenge to kill. And no, it's not becoming less fun. They are actually fun through and through. But to be fair, Mimics is, well, the only, well, cool type of enemies that you will actually encounter. The rest are, well, pretty generic. There, There is a big bulky guy that can charge you. There is a telepath enemy that will, well, attack you psychically and can revive people and they will fight you like zombies. There are sentry drones, which are simply a headache, especially in the later stages of the game. But they're just generic enemies. The mimics can actually, the, the mimics is the saving grace of them all. The weapon wise, you don't have a lot of choices there as well. You only have a few weapons and probably the most unique one is a glue gun. You're basically shooting a glue at the enemies and it might freeze them or it might actually unlock a few different paths in the game and level design itself. But the combat and the gameplay itself, other than mimics, is saved by the neuromods. Neuromods are basically your skill points that you can invest in a bunch of different skills. At the beginning, you have a very basic skill points, like uh, getting better resources for crafting, and yeah, you can actually craft in this game, or just dealing more damage with your guns, or being able to run faster, jump higher, take more damage, and things like that. But as you unlock the game, you actually unlock the Tython abilities. And that means that basically, if you see the Tython having an ability, you can actually have the same ability yourself. For example, you can actually get the Mimic's ability to basically mimic anything. So it can actually be transformed into anything that you want. Or you can have a telepathic ability of the telepathic uh, Tythons and things like that. Which makes the combat a bit more fun. However, it has its own downside. Because if you invest into Tython abilities, you are becoming more Tython than a human. And the stations, turrets and defensive systems will actually see you as a Tython and they will attack you on sight. That's actually a cool trade-off that you have in the game. Overall gameplay is pretty interesting except for the end part and excessive backtracking. You are actually visiting the same part of the station over and over and over again quite a few times and every single time you return the Tython are actually, well, overtaking that part of the station again and you have to clear them out again. And even though you're becoming stronger and more powerful, the Tython are becoming stronger and more powerful and numerous as well. And it's becoming a bit tedious to do it quite a few of the times. Especially against the robots at the drones. They are just they're just the worst. So yeah, it's at some point it's not becoming very fun. However, because of the story, you will most likely endure through it. I endured through it. It was not a very big deal for me because I was interested in the story, but 
I understand that for many it might be a bit of a deal breaker. The game will take somewhere around 20 to 30 hours to complete and if you want to well complete it to the fullest like 100% it will take you around 50 to maybe 60 hours to do so so you are getting quite a lot of gameplay from this game but again the last part is a bit dragged out. A last maybe five to ten hours can be fit maybe in one to two hours of the gameplay. But yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, who said that it was flawless? Okay, that we understand. It's not flawless, but is it worth it though? And for that, let's go and check out the prices. The game is available on Steam for the base price of $29.99 for tier 1 countries and $18.99 for tier 2 countries. And it can go as low as $5.99 for tier 1 countries and $4.74 for tier 2 countries. The game is also available on Game Pass both on Xbox and on PC. And right now we're talking only about the base game. The game has actually two DLCs. One is a story DLC that expands story even more, uh, which is great thing and which you and which you should play as well even though this is not a review for that moon crash dlc and another is a multiplayer asymmetric gameplay and to be fair i haven't played the second dlc so i cannot talk about that so is it worth it on a discount 100 this is 100 worth it you should get this game because 5.99 this game is worth every single day of the week if you have a game pass this is one of the must play game pass games as well but what about for the full price well to be fair i would not buy the game for the full price just because it is not new game anymore and it is on a discount very 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 often if you can afford it and if you don't mind paying 30 dollars of this you will not regret paying 30 dollars for this 100 percent you will not regret and if you like what you see and if you like the gameplay that you see you will enjoy this game a lot again i would not buy this game for the full price just because it is on a sale very very often plus it's on a game pass so you can just go and complete it on a game pass and that's it so overall verdict is this game is pretty amazing it's giving you experience that you are not seeing very often nowadays if you like the overall atmosphere and type of game play of dishonored and if you like this and if you like this type of games you're going to enjoy this game a lot even though it's a completely different game you will see a lot of signature things of the developers in this game as well actually this game is closer to the dishonored than it is closer to the original prey and if you like games with a good level design an interesting story by the way the game is actually in an alternate history which is kind of like spoiler but actually not you're gonna enjoy this game a lot and yeah i 100 recommend this game and yeah probably i would recommend this game any year ever so yeah you're not gonna regret it well this should be it for today thank you for being here with me like the video if you liked it subscribe for more videos like this one and i'm gonna see you in the next one see ya